dear students this is nilanjana senyal from my math friend online and e porashna in our last session we had learnt about the section formula we had found the coordinates of a point which divided a line segment in the given ratio internally now today we will be finding the coordinates of a point which divides a line segment in the ratio m1 is to m2 externally so let's start this is the grid people and these are the two coordinate axes this is one of the points one of the end points of the line segment p with coordinates as x1 and y1 and the other end point is q with coordinates as x2 and y2 and this is the line segment pq is the line segment now this line segment pq is being extended this way and p is a point on this extended line segment pq which is dividing this line segment pq externally and what is the ratio pt is of m1 units and qt is of m2 units so pt by qt is equal to m1 by m2 now this point t is having coordinates as x comma y and we have to find the values of x and y in terms of x1 y1 x2 y2 m1 and m2 we see that t is not on the line segment pq but it is on the extended line segment so we see that the point t divides the line segment pq externally now for finding the coordinates of the point t we construct two perpendiculars this is one of the two perpendiculars from this point p on this line qx2 and the foot of the perpendicular is named as c next we draw another perpendicular from this point q on this line segment tx and the foot of the perpendicular is named as d so we have pt by qt equal to m1 and m2 we we have known that now triangle pcq pcq this one this triangle is similar to triangle qtt this triangle by angle angle criterion how pc is parallel to qd and pt is the transversal so angle qpc that is this angle equal to angle tqd that is this angle because they are corresponding angles again this line qx2 is parallel to line tx and again pt is the transversal therefore angle pqc that is this one is equal to angle t sorry qtd that is this one angle pqc that is this angle is equal to angle qtd that is this angle because again these two are corresponding angles so we are having two angles of this triangle pcq equal to two angles of this triangle qdt therefore we can say that triangle pcq is similar to triangle qdt by the ee criterion and please students again i am reminding you that please name the two triangles correctly by point to point matching since this angle p is equal to angle q angle qpc is equal to angle tqd since i have written this p first for this triangle pcq i have taken q to be the first letter of this triangle qdt next pqc this one is equal to qtd this one so since q has been written in the third position for the triangle pcq t has been written 
in this third position of this triangle QDT. And obviously the third letter will be coming in the middle position. This is very essential otherwise it becomes very difficult to find the corresponding sites. Most of the students get confused to find the corresponding sides of similar triangles. If you name the two triangles by point to point matching, the corresponding sides become so very obvious. See, PQ, first and the third letter. The numerators will be from one triangle, the first triangle, and the denominators will be from the second triangle. So we are taking the first and the third letter of the first triangle in the numerator. So we will be taking the first and the third letter from the second triangle for the denominator. So it is PQ by QT. Next is PC, first and the second letter. So it is QD from the second triangle. So PC by QD. And CQ, second and the third letter, DT. CQ by DT. This becomes our relation A. Now, we will be finding the values of each of these three ratios independently. First of all, we take up PQ by QT. PQ by QT. We see PT by QT is equal to M1 by M2. QT, the denominators are the same. But the numerators are different. So, in order to get the value of this ratio, we would like to bring in this PT term. How to get this PT term? We see PQ equal to, PQ can be written as PT minus QT because we want this PT. And we do not mind if we get another QT along with this PT because we are having QT in the denominator. So PQ, we are writing PQ as PT minus QT. PT minus QT. And the denominator is QT. Now, if we separate these two terms, it will be PT by QT minus QT by QT. And what is QT by QT? It is equal to 1. So, we have PT by QT minus 1. PT by QT from this one, the first term. And it is minus QT by QT, which is giving us a minus 1. And in place of PT by QT, we are writing M1 minus, uh, sorry, M1 by M2 minus 1. And taking the LCM, we have M1 minus M2 in the numerator and M2 in the denominator. This becomes our equation 1. Coming to PC by QT. PC by QT. These two points. Now, the points P and C lie on the same horizontal straight line indicating that they will be having the same ordinate value. That is Y1. The abscissa values are different. So, PC will be, the length of PC will be the difference between the two abscissa values. So, we are taking the second letter first. We are taking X2 minus X1. Every time we are taking the second letter first, you have to stick to this rule. Either you take first letter first or second letter first. And what you, whatever you take, stick to that rule every time. Means for PC you will be taking C first, for QT you will be taking Q first. No. If you take the second letter first, for PC you take C, then for QT you have to take D first. Okay. So PC is X2 minus X1. And QD. The, again, these two are on the same horizontal straight line. Therefore, they are having the same ordinate value that is Y2. The abscissa values are different. So, it is X minus X2. So, PC by QD equal to X2 minus X1 divided by X minus X2. This becomes our second equation. Coming to CQ by DT. CQ. These two on the same vertical straight line. So, the abscissa value is the same. The ordinates are different. CQ, Q is the second letter, so it is Y2 minus Y1 by DT. Same vertical straight line, hence same abscissa value, different ordinate values. 
So we will be taking t first. It is y minus y2. y2 minus y1 divided by y minus y2. This becomes our third equation. Now we will be forming two equations from this relation A in order to get the values of x and y. From relation A we have pq by qt equal to pc by qt. This part. pq by qt equal to pc by qt. Now in place of this ratio we will be putting this value m1 minus m2 by m2 and in place of pc by qt we will be putting this value. So we have m1 minus m2 by m2 equal to x2 minus x1 by x minus x2. And next we do cross multiplication. So we have m1 minus m2 multiplied by x minus x2 equal to m2 multiplied by x2 minus x1. Now this part is we are having two terms. So we have to multiply this m1 minus m2 by x and then we have to multiply m1 minus m2 by minus x2. So we keep the m1 minus m2 multiplied by x as it is. Like over here m1 minus m2 multiplied by x we are keeping it as it is. We are not doing the multiplication. We will be coming to know the reason very soon. And this part we are doing the multiplication. So m1 minus x2 gives us a minus m1 x2. And minus m2 multiplied by minus x2 is a plus m2 x2. Is equal to m2 x2 minus m2 x1. And these two, m2, x2, we are having this term on both the sides of this equal to sign. So they can be cancelled. And since we have to find the value of x, we keep this term on the left hand side of the equal to sign. And we take this minus m1, x2 to the right hand side of the equal to sign. Since it is having a minus sign over here, so when it changes its side, it changes its sign as well. It becomes a plus m1 x2. So we have m1, m1 minus m2 whole multiplied by x equal to m1 x2 minus m2 x1. Giving x equal to m1 x2 minus m2 x1 divided by m1 minus m2. Now you can understand why did I keep it as it is. Why didn't I multiply the terms? So we have got the value of x in terms of x1, x2 and m1, m2. Now we have to find the value of y. Again from relation A we have, now we will be taking this one and this one. pq by qt equal to cq by dt. Okay. First of all over here we had taken these two. Now we will be taking the first ratio and the third ratio. pq by qt equal to cq by dt. See pq by qt equal to cq by dt. And in place of pq by qt we can write m1 minus m2 by m2. And what was cq by dt equal to let us see. cq by dt was equal to y2 minus y1 divided by y minus y2. So we have y2 minus y1 divided by y minus y2. Next we will be cross multiplying. So we have m1 minus m2 multiplied by y minus y2 equal to m2 multiplied by y2 minus y1. Next we will be keeping m1 minus m2 multiplied by y as it is and we will be doing the actual multiplication for this part minus y2. So we have m1 minus m2 whole multiplied by y. m1 multiplied by minus y2 gives us minus m1 y2. And minus m2 multiplied by minus y2 is a plus m2 y2. Over here we are having m2 y2 and minus m2 y1. Again we are having this term common on both the sides of the equal to sign. So we can cancel them. You can bring this m2 y2 to this side also. It will be having a minus m2 y2 sign. It will be having a minus sign. 
when brought to the right hand side and the plus into y2 and minus into y2 will get cancelled. So you can cancel it over here or you can bring this term to the right hand side and then cancel. Okay. And we will be keeping this term on the left hand side since it is containing this variable y and we will be bringing this minus m1 y2 to the, to the right hand side or the equal to sign. So the minus will be changed to plus and we will be having my, uh, sorry, m1 minus m2 whole multiplied by y equal to m1 y2 minus m2 y1. So y is equal to m1 y2 minus m2 y1 divided by m1 minus m2. So we have found the coordinates of the point T. Therefore the coordinates of the point T having coordinates as x and y whose value we have found out which divides the line segment PQ externally in the ratio m1 is to m2 r m1 x2 minus m2 x1 divided by m1 minus m2 this is the x value or the abscissa of value and m1 y2 minus m2 y1 divided by m1 minus m2 this is the ordinate value. Now we had found the coordinates of the point T which divided the line segment PQ internally in the ratio m1 is to m2 in our last session. Over there we had the abscissa value equal to m1 x2 plus m2 x1 divided by m1 plus m2 and the ordinate value was m1 y2 plus m2 y1 divided by m1 plus m2. So you find that when it is internally divided when the line segment is internally divided we have plus signs both in the numerator as well as in the denominator but when it is divided externally the line segment pq is divided externally obviously in the same ratio m1 is to m2 then what is changing is the sign the terms are the same every term is the same but the plus signs are getting changed to minus signs, both for the numerator and the denominator. Okay, this is the only thing that you have to remember. If it is a, an internal division, it will be a plus sign. If it is an external division, it will be a minus sign, both for the numerator and the denominator, and for the abscissa value as well as the ordinate value. So students, this brings us to the end of this session. Thank you for hearing.